interesting. So why don't we try uploading a little bit so we actually get a feel for this. So I, for GeoJSONs, um, I was just going to go to one of the websites I've created, which is this nativeland.ca, and I have all these territories. You can see there's a huge number of different indigenous territories here, and that's kind of the idea behind the site. Um, and over here I have some neat little GeoJSON data. I have this API available. I've actually already downloaded it um, directly, so I'm just going to go ahead and upload some of these GeoJSONs. Now you're probably going to run into errors. It's very possible, but if you don't, you'll get lucky and you'll have a, a nice, nicely formatted GeoJSON. We're going to go over some of the errors you can get in the next section and some formatting issues that you may run into. So in my case, I have about 800 features, um, so that's 800 individual geographic elements, and then we're just uploading that all, and um, we can just head right in and start editing. So this is the data set from my, my website here, Native Land. So it should probably look something like this. And indeed, here it is. We have it. We have all these polygons. If we click on them, we can see there's some information about them on the side, which is what I have put into the GeoJSON in the uh, properties. There's various information associated with it. Uh, different color, different um, slugs, and just, just different things that I, I found necessary to put in the data. So you can see here, we uh, when you click on a shape, you can actually move it around. Um, you can pull the items around. You can just grab and actually drag whole elements, and it will. You can see how it moves as it changes, and that's because of a complicated geographic thing called projection, which is basically um, just about how how the globe, how the Earth is actually round. But this is it's a flat map, and you need to do funny things with geography in order to make it a flat thing when it's actually round. So that's why this is moving as I drag it. But um, so that it stays geographically consistent, it will be the same size as you move it around. Um, so they have all that built in, which is great. It's a little editor. You can also search through your data set. You can click here on the side, search data set, and then you can choose one of the properties. So for instance, I'm often searching, someone will send me a correction for one of these territories, and I can search the name, like Nunavut is one of the places. And you can see here I have a few, and if I click on it, it just brings me right to it, highlights it. It's great. Very nice, handy thing. You can also change the background style, and now you're starting to get a sense maybe of style. That's, that's something tied into those styles that uh, we see on the other page um, in Mapbox. These are different styles that are built in. So I could change actually the base map. So let's say I need the street data to draw some information. Um, then I change the base map and I'm able to draw that information better, or at least see the boundaries more clearly than this dark map. Uh, in my case, the dark map is fine because I don't really care about the boundaries that I see. Um, but it can be handy if I need to tie, if I'm doing a little bit of drawing of some information uh, some from some paper map, and then I need to top, make sure I'm in the correct place. Um, sometimes the other data can be handy. There's actually another cool feature in Mapbox that we are going to be using, and that's um, some of the pitch abilities. So you can see there I can actually drag the map like that. And that's part of the really cool thing of Mapbox GL, is that it allows this kind of three-dimensional aspect to it, so that we'll be able to again make buildings into 3 3D and all kinds of things. So what you do here is you just right click your mouse and then you can just drag and it'll just pitch like that. Um, and there's also, you know, you can reset it and on our front end map we're going to have controls for that for users as well because no one intuitively knows that that's what you should do uh, is right click. So there we are. Um, if we wanted to make a new feature it's very straightforward. You can see here you can add a point very easily can easily add properties. I could add a new, um, let's say I, I found out about a new territory. I'm just going to delete that. And that um, someone's been wanting me to do Hawaii. So if I draw a little circle around Hawaii there, I could add a property saying, oh, the name of this is Hawaii, although I don't know what I would actually put. But I could put that, press confirm, add another property. You can see they that pre-populates this with all of the different types of fields that are in the other GeoJSONs that you've uploaded. So that if you need to easily select one and have it be the same, you don't have to accidentally misspell it. For instance, 
have a lowercase n instead of uppercase n. Just click it, boom, there you go, fill it. They also give you other values that have been used. So that's not very useful in the case where I need a unique value, but sometimes you need to repeat the same value. For instance, everything needs to have a certain category. Um, and if things have a certain category, then they can be grouped together later um, when you style them. So you can add that information, and we're going to be doing this in a practical way as we go through. I just want to introduce you to it at this point. You can also continue to import more GeoJSON features. So for instance, when I added Australia, I had that as a different GeoJSON feature altogether, set of GeoJSON features, and I just uploaded it into this file, and I had them both together then. All right, so let's head out of the features. Um, I'm not going to save what I did, of course, because it's just messing around. Um, I'm going to delete this, just to keep my stuff clean, uh, and let's head into tile sets. <laughs>